Hey everyone, welcome back for part 2. On this episode we'll focus on animating the movement of the spaceship and to do that we'll have to start by creating a raycaster object. To start inside Cinda's Velt we'll need two new meshes. One will be a simple transparent plane and another one a small little red sphere. I'm also saving a reference to these two new meshes since the raycaster will be created and used inside the script block. And that's how they look into the existing scene. Just a simple plane and a red sphere on top of it. The objective here is to launch a ray into the scene, starting at our mouse position, and hit the plane and record where the intersection occurs. Once we know the intersection point, we'll validate that it's working by moving the red sphere at that position. So in this case, the mouse is here. When we'll set up the raycaster, this will be the point on the plane that will be hit by the ray, and the sphere will have to move at that point. All right, to start, we'll need a reference to the camera, which we can get with the use for else hook. And then inside the on mount lifecycle, we can register the mouse move listener. And we're also creating a raycaster object and a pointer to save the mouse position. Inside the pointer move function, we're setting the pointer vector and transforming the screen space position of the mouse into a normalized range of minus one to plus one, which in practice, it just means that if the mouse's position at the top right corner of the screen, pointer will be plus one plus one and if instead we position the mouse at the bottom left corner of the screen pointer will hold minus one minus one then we're preparing the raycaster by giving it the mouse position and camera and then selecting which objects we want to intersect in this case the plane ref mesh and if we do have an intersection we can get the point of the intersection and if that exists, we can set the position of the sphere to the intersection point. And that's really all it takes to find and test the intersection point. Now, no matter where I place the camera, we can still get the intersection point by hovering the mouse over the plane. Now, the next objective is to use this intersection point to animate the position of the spaceship. Two components will be animated, the Y translation and the X, Z rotation of the model. We'll start with the Y position of the model, which will follow a spring-based type of motion. That is to say, if the mouse position intersects here, the spaceship will try to reach that point by doing this type of motion. And in practice, it's not going to move to the left. It will remain in place and go up and down. I just needed some space to draw the motion. And how do we get up here? Well, instead of using a simple linear translation from A to B, we will update on each frame an acceleration variable. And we're going to add to the acceleration variable the distance D between the current point position and the target position. That is the intersection with the mouse multiplied by a stiffness factor. So let's imagine that we are on frame one and this is the total distance, but multiplied by the stiffness, the acceleration gets this type of change. Now onto the next frame, we are here and the distance is decreased to this amount and times the stiffness, we are going to add this piece to the acceleration. Thus, the total acceleration will be that and on the next frame, the point will be up here. Now we went past the target position, and so the acceleration needs to go down a little, and so the total amount of acceleration for iteration free will be something like this. It's still going up. And since it's still going up, this point at the top will need an additional boost on the negative y-axis for the acceleration, which will now become something like this, or even negative. And if we keep on following this algorithm, eventually we would see this type of motion. So this would end up being a perpetual wave-like animation. And the way to go from this one to something that converges to some point, which in this case has to be the target position intersected by the mouse, all we have to do is use a simple damping factor at the end of each frame and that will basically be a number between 0 and 1 that slowly decreases the acceleration on each frame. So for our project, I think we'll end up choosing 0 0.95, and this will be enough to move from 
a perpetual waveform type of animation to something that converges to the target position. And in real life JavaScript, that's how we do it. We'll need to declare two new variables, translation Y and translation acceleration, and then use useFrame, which is a hook that runs every time a new frame is computed. And if the intersection point exists, we will first determine the target Y position. This is just the intersect, the Y part of the intersection point. And then we will add to the acceleration variable, the distance between the current target position and the position of the spaceship, which we will assume that at the beginning is a position zero times the stiffness factor, which in this case is 0.0.02. .0 .0 then this is the damping factor that multiplies the acceleration by a given amount between 0 and 1. And then after we have the acceleration value, we can just add it to the translation position to change the position of the spaceship. And you don't have to use the same stiffness and damping factor that I'm using here. You can actually encourage you to experiment by choosing different values and see what that does to the animation of the spring. Once you find two values that you like, just apply the translation y variable to the y position of the spaceship and we'll be good to go. And here's the script in action. The spaceship correctly tries to reach the red dot position over time by slowly converging the spring motion to the target position. And there's one last step to do to finish the animation and that is to rotate the ship along the z-axis while the model is being translated to the new y position. We'll first find the direction between the current position of the model and the intersection point on the plane, and this direction will be compared to the positive y vector to determine the angle between the two directions. And once we have the angle, we can rotate the ship around it. By subtracting the two points and normalizing the resulting vector, we can get this direction, and after computing the dot product between this direction and the up vector, with the arc cosine of the dot product, we can finally get the angle between the two directions. Awesome, and now that we have the angle, how do we apply it to the spaceship? We'll apply the same spring-based motion that we're using for the translation here. So initially, the angle and the angular acceleration will be zero. And as we move along, we'll update the acceleration based on the distance between the two angles, then we'll apply the damping and at the end, we'll finally update the angle z variable by adding to it the angle acceleration. Let's now set angle z as the z-axis rotation for the spaceship model. And lo and behold, our ship is now finally going up and down. However, we can add a little bit of additional color to this animation by applying the rotation also to the x-axis of the model. And this is one of those instances where it's important to specify the order of our rotations because by default, 3JS would first rotate the model along the x-axis, then Y, and finally Z. However, our animation looks the best when we start by rotating Z first, and then the other axis, and we can specify this ordering with the fourth parameter as a string. I encourage you guys to try to use XYZ instead, and check how that changes the look of the animation. And I personally feel this ordering is the best one, but you'll be the final judge. It's a slight change, but I felt it was worth adding since it makes the movement more organic and less robotic. And we now have one last problem. If the mouse is too close to the center of the model, we're creating ultra wide angle differences. And we're basically throwing up all over the control room. So we'll limit the angular acceleration with a simple trick. We'll set the X dimension of the intersection as a fixed value. And to apply this fix, we just have to set the X dimension of the intersection point to minus three irrespective of what is the real value of the intersection point. By doing that, even if our mouse is very close to the center of the model, the intersection point will always be, always be registered as if it's fixed in the x dimension at minus three, thus limiting the angular acceleration of the spaceship. At last, we can set both the plane and the sphere as invisible meshes and change the visibility only if we later on have to debug this specific part of the code base again. And there we have it, our animation is finished and the spaceship is moving swiftly through space time as we figure out how to add moving stars in our universe. And speaking of that, the next episode will focus on adding the stars and a few interesting post-processing effects. I hope you enjoyed this part of the project and I hope to see you soon on the next and last episode. Cheers!